What is up guys, I'm going to show you how to install HackG2 for your SNES Classic Mini and the version I'm using is version 2.21D and it's the most recent version out there which was released two days ago and that was the 12th of October and uh, I have about like 800 plus games currently on my SNES class Classic here they are, all organized with the box art. We'll try to make sure the box art is all the same size. But, um, some of them are a little bit off, but you can also put your own box art on here. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you how to set it up and add games onto your SNES Classic. Alright, let's begin hacking the SNES Mini. First thing you want to do is you want to go onto the GitHub page, and I'll put a link in the description below, and this is where you'll find all the updates of the unofficial release, cluster release of HackG. So make sure you um, keep updated, because there is minor fixes and stuff. So download here HackG2, this is the latest release, but you also want to make sure that um, it's for the SNES Mini and not the NES Mini because the NES Mini HackG is also on here as well. So first download it, I've already done it here. Then extract. Open up HackG, run as administrator. It will then ask you which console you are using. And I am using the SNES Classic Mini. And this is HackG right now. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to dump the kernel, the original kernel on your SNES Mini. So we're going to go on kernel, dump kernel. Do you want to dump the kernel? Click yes. All right, this is where you need to plug in your SNES Mini to your PC. So first thing, make sure power button on your SNES Mini is turned off. And then you want to reconnect the SNES Mini here using your USB. Hold the reset button and turn on with the power switch. Then gonna install driver. It will come up with this. I'm going to leave that on. Let it dump the kernel. And it will say your original kernel is saved in the HackG2 dump folder. Do not lose it. So let's locate that. Okay. And there's your kernel. Just copy it and paste onto desktop. And you want to email it to yourself or save it in a thumb drive or whatever. Do not lose this. Next, you want to add your SNES ROMs. And I've downloaded a SNES ROM pack, which you can find on Google. Uh, this has 777 ROM sets in here. And these are all NTSC uh, USA releases. I'm not too sure if the power releases work or Japanese ones do not work on the SNES Mini here. Um, but I think you can use a conversion tool, which you'll have to download. A separate program for that to convert your SNES, PAL games, or uh, Japanese releases. 
So here we are with, uh, it's at 698, should be 777, but I've selected a few here. These are 80 games in total. So these are the ones I'm going to put on just to test it out. So I'm going to click on Add More Games, and it's under my desktop, under SNES Mini, and just highlight all of these open. That's not, is that a SNES game? It's not going to work, so. Do you want to use a third file? No, no. So, not all of these games work on there. You have to be careful which one you choose. So for the ones that don't work, just click no. And this is just the ROM pack I picked up. Instead of manually downloading games, which is probably the best thing to do because you won't get a mixed batch. Right, so these are the ones that are successfully moved on to the SNES Mini. Next thing we want to do is we want to have box art for all of these games. So you can highlight them all if you want to. I'm in shift, select all, download box art for all games. And some of them, I guess some of them is not working, but it's Googling all the box art for these games. I'm going to show you how to put your own as well after this is done. Click OK. And as you can see, it's come up with box art. But I can just click on Google here. This is how you do it individually. And then you can choose size and stuff. Or, if you want, you can put your own box art. And I have downloaded a pack full of these box art. But these are vertical. You can also get horizontal ones as well. I'm not sure if you can actually drag it. No, you can't drag it on there. But let's just try and put one on. What's this? Let's try Virtual soccer, let's have a look. Desktop. Okay, it doesn't have box up for that. It should have one for Terminator 2. So this is the full box up for it. But then the only problem is um, they're not going to be all the same. Next one I'm going to do is show you how to kind of organize your game. So I think you can put it in folders if you want. I'm going to click this. Pages split games equally. So they all show up on the line. And then I'm going to go back on settings, pages, folders, and structure. And then click on maximum gaze games per page. I'm going to choose about 50 games. Once that's done, you can also choose whether a game is two player or one player, but it somehow it's done this automatically, as you can see, and it also has the release date of there, which is pretty awesome, as well as publisher. Right, so next we're going to Synchronize select the games with NES and SNES Mini. Click Synchronize. You need to flash the custom kernel for you. This is only required once. Do you want to continue? Click Yes. Make sure everything's plugged in correctly. And 
you know, you haven't switched off your SNES Mini, or there's not going to be a power surge anytime soon. So click yes, and then next is going to flash the drive. This is probably going to take a few minutes, um, but we'll return once it's done. All right, it's finally done. Click OK. It's going to move all the games onto your SNES Mini. As you can see at the bottom, it's come up with how much space I've got left. Well, originally, that was 300 megabytes, but I guess because of uh, the flash and stuff, takes up some memory. Click OK. All right, so that's all done now, so we should be able to play all these games that we've put on to the SNES Mini. Uh, before I go, I'm going to show you how to flash the original drive. If anything goes wrong, uh, you can go to the factory reset. So just click on kernel, flash original kernel, and make sure you know you haven't lost the original flash. So once that's done, uh, we're going to go back and check these games out. Alright, so here we are. This is what it looks like when you put all your ROMs onto the SNES Classic. And as you can see, there's like folders here for the different letters, so A to F, F to M. Click on that and then it will refresh and show you all the games in that order. I've also tried to make the box art as similar as possible without there being any too big or vertical style artwork. Like I said before, you can put your own if you want to. Another neat feature is you can also organize them by how many times you played, by release date, publisher, title, by two play games, and recently played. I believe you can still like save your games. I think there's only four save points you can have. So obviously, the more games, the more save slots you want to think about. But maybe on an update, <laughs> they will um, implement more save points. And I've also noticed that when you leave an idle, the screensaver mode uh, if you turn that if you have turned that on that is that it doesn't play sample games from the ROMs that you've added it only plays the samples from the ROMs the original ROMs that are on here so that's another setback all right so let's start off the game zombies ate my neighbors one of my favorite Two player games on the SNES. Now I did try Killer Instinct and that didn't work. Um, another game was Street Fighter Alpha 2. That also didn't work. There's a few other games as well. But make sure you check out the list of what's compatible because I think only 75% of games work on the SNES As you can see, this pretty much works flawlessly. The sound is spot on. And it looks pretty good on a big, big screen TV. So yeah, I hope that helps you out guys and 
how you can play all your favourite SNES games on your SNES. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again in another video.